gesture like sun Lays me down with my mind She runs throughout the night No need to fight Never a frown with golden brown Every time just like the last On her ship tied to the mast Two distant lands takes both my hands Never a frown Supporter since since the school, and I uh, just got fascinated by the clothes and fashion. And I used to go in the 70s to Forest and see all that was, that was standing open ends. And, and next minute, what's all the fuss about? Everyone's going, I'm going to tongs it. And I noticed all the different clothes and fashion and I thought, because it gave you a bit of a buzz. Like, and just got up to as a young, young kid, and I started going to, as it happens, a few Leeds games. Okay, they were big in the 70s. And I noticed the different cultures and the, different, the way different people dressed from different areas. Leeds were, were sort of wearing like Slazinger jumpers and all that, Forest were sort of doing the same sort of thing. I was more into that, that fascinated me more. I possessed a lot of violence. You wanted to be someone who was part of a gang. It was who had the smartest clothes, and then it was who was, going to be, who, who, who was the artist, and it was backing your mates sort of In them days, we couldn't really afford a lot of the clothes. 16, 15, 17, we didn't have the money. And uh, we used to do the sports shops. I'm not proud to say it, to be honest with you, but I did, we did do a bit of that. But it was all part of parcel of getting the stuff. We wanted to be the smartest lads. And we didn't have the money in them days, and that's, how, that's to get the clothes, that's what we had to do. It was a, in London, it was a, they called it casuals. In Leicester, they called it trendies. In Nottingham, they called it shadies. In Liverpool, it was uh, scallies. Man, the Manx were just Manx. You know, but it, it was a different name for everything, but it, overall it's become casual. No, it is casual. Every no. every little town used to have a different name for what it was. It's not lasted in most of it. It's gone, gone 30 years now. Yeah. I said to the young forest kids, now, nah, it's not worth it. You know, cameras and you know, just for a bit of a punch up. It's not what we had in the day. You yeah. get to prison for not even throwing a punch nowadays. It's like a, it's like a bug, it's like a disease. You can't help it. It's like drugs. It's drawn to you. you can't, it's hard to get out of it once you're into it. Now. But I don't like being in a big large group. I don't like groups nowadays because, you know, it's been that, it was all about being in a group. Now nah, I don't, because I, I could get drawn to it. I don't want to get in, into it anymore. I haven't gone to football. I've never got in trouble with the police. You know, I'm like 39 years of age. I thought, if I don't pack it up now, I'm never going to get out of it. And I watched England in my prison cell and I thought, what am I doing here? For my family more than anything as well. We're going to prison at 39 years of age and seeing, seeing my mum and dad you know, suffering. You know, I've got a lot of good friends through football and I like going to other cities now and reminiscing and mixing with the lads I used to fight with. And I could go for a drink anywhere in the country except probably Sunderland and Derby. Because they still don't like this much like that. I go anywhere and you know, you're guests of honour and it's great. We're like, I'm 47 this year, you know what I mean? So it's just. I'm glad we was part of it. It was just a game to us, really. It was just a bit of sport, a bit of fun. School, yeah, go back to the early 60s, uh, Manchester United, but in them days City were a big threat as well, and uh, after what, 30, 40 years City a threat again, so um, I'm glad City are a threat, you know, rather than the Scousers. <laughs> I was fascinated with the fashion at first, but I was too young to get involved, 68, 69, when the skinheads, we didn't call them skinheads, we call them boneheads, or baldies, and then 69 they got stamps as skinheads. I wanted to be one, but I just wasn't old enough, still at school, I went in detention centre. And when I come out, I had a bit of an angry attitude, so it was 1970 now. I got a pair of Doc Martens, braces, Grandad t-shirt, and I went to Derby. It was called the Watney Cup Final. And there I witnessed my first violence that I could not really get involved in, but um, it was intoxicating, just being there. 
And um, what I was scared of, truthfully, was going down. Because in them days, if you went down, the boot went in. And uh, in them days, a lot of them wore steel toe caps. And uh, I've known lads who get a good booting or a good kicking at a football game and they'll never go to a game again. And uh, I was hooked all the way through the 70s on football violence. In the 80s, we made money out of football. Um, we became grafters, really. So we'd use football as a good excuse to turn up in towns, rob tills, pick pockets, snatch money from the turnstiles, the bars inside the ground. And quite truthfully, we liked doing that because it'd go in the papers. But we was always after money in the 80s, especially with the casual clubber, you know, the clothes. Even though we used to rob them and sell them and keep them, if you've seen an item, sometimes you break your own bank for it. And then you, within a week or two, it's ripped to foot, you know, from fighting at matches. One in France, 77, first time in Europe, really. Yeah. About two, 3,000 United men. And we were used to going in opposition's ends, mob rule running in. But really, when we've got into the, the French section, we didn't really know it was family and this and that. And what happened in France, there was a big rush down to the um, where the field is, and the fences were very high. So the people who were trying to escape were going up the fences, but when they got to the top they were loose, so they were falling down. And there's some terrible injuries. And then that was the first time I thought, hang on, innocent people here can get caught up in things like this. The organised hooligans, they, they like to fight with each other and try and organise it so it's in a space away. So it's, it's, it's a fair kind of fight. But even then I've seen a lot of innocent people who are just caught up in it, the crush. Either get knocked over by cars, into buses. Yeah. I can't say it got rid of what I was doing. We made, a, we made a good living for ourselves. And through football, going into Europe and making money, we ended up at the Olympics in Korea. We ended up in Japan. We ended up on Caribbean cruises, robbing them and everything. Didn't matter, we'd done a lot of jail in Europe. You know, spent 10 years of my life in jail. No, I've not really got any regrets. into the gang culture thing, you know, because it's kind of like a family, like everyone tells you the characteristics of the gang culture is family, brotherhood, camaraderie, and everything else. And the nation and the world was in the peace and love movement, you know. It was a backlash to the culture at the time, which was the hippie culture, because it was a time of the Vietnam War, and it always getting nature opposites, don't they, you know what I mean? So this aggressive, violent, aggressive street culture come up in Britain, um, obviously, it was an aggressive culture, but uh, the streets were aggressive at the time, pretty much similar to today, because once society found out what was going on and stamped down on it in the streets, where could, where could the youth mushroom legally, um, you know, gather legally, you know, in large good groups without being, you know, swamped on by the police behind the goal football matches, the youth started gathering, they never did before. And the casuals fashion really come with another game with the youth, the youth generation. I remember the casuals, first seeing the casuals at the time, Britain was great, it was a, it was a rich time for diverse cultures. Because at the time you had every culture going, normally it's just one culture for that summer, and a rival culture. This time you had a, a melting pot of um, revival mods, um, the second generation of skinhead, you had new romantics, you had punk, it's like five different cultures it's under the radar of them all become the casual. But you really come with a young group, you got to think a kid on the terrace is a gun with his dad and his uncle at eight, nine, ten years old with his parents. And he's only seen violence. So when they come at 13, 14, 15, when they start going their own mates and go around their parents to football, they all they've seen in their life on the terrace is going with their parents as an innocent kid is football violence when they're unchecked. So they quickly move into that, they call them fascist children. Yeah, that's quite different to us. Where we come in as a movement, they come in as a way of life. If you look at the time between something like 77 and 82, that period, 
when the gates were down because of the trouble, there was only a, a male age group of 12 to 25 going to football. And like a day there's women and different groups, middle classes and everything else. It was only that working class youth movement culture going to the football because you've got to think the East End and that tough area through the craze and you know, the M8 flight jackets they was wearing, the Fred Perry's and you know, DMs and that chunky look, all part of that Mako East End look. And all of a sudden you've got these wife kids coming through with Packer Max and trainers and the girly hair, flick hair, you know? And it was, it was like a, a boy band, you know what I mean? And what happens like any fashion, it drags the mainstream. Right? And we was the mainstream, you know? We were the old dinosaurs, the top boys, you know? Everyone's getting into it, you know? So in our world, we was big players. You know, we were like film stars in this world of football miners back then, you know? The, the casual wasn't into the music, it was a football thing. And this style of dressing, you know what I mean? Said football without any colours. I think it, when I went, sort of went to football uh, independently away from my parents and what have you uh, in 1980. I was 16 years old, so uh, in them days it was sort of fight or flight. Everywhere you went, there were a lot of trouble. The police hadn't really got you under wraps and what have you, so everywhere we went, everyone seemed to want to have a pop at you. So I probably got more experience in one season uh, as an hooligan or a potential hooligan than youngers get nine, ten years at football. It's in your blood. I, th I think. I think what hooligans get tired with that they don't care about game. It's a misconception that people think that football hooligans are just in it. They mindless mourners and they don't like football. I, violence were a part and parcel of it. But first and foremost, it'd be a football team wanting to win because it's like a drug football violence. Once you're in it and you're in it big time, it's it's very hard to get out on it. And I thought to myself, if I carry on with this, I'm going to end up losing my liberty and I don't want to see my kids growing up behind their dad. And don't get me wrong, there's been times when I've been in the wrong place, wrong time. In the 70s, it was sort of free for all. Anybody could cop for it. Well, certainly in the early 80s, when football firms proper got together. So, sort of 80s casuals came in and they were a bit of a code of conduct. And you know who lads were because how they dressed. And the chef and I had got six years last, uh, last week. The fight against Middlesbrough last year, they threw a bottle, he's got six year. There's a lot of people out of Sheffield don't realise the intensity of hatred between two sides. I mean, it's proper hatred, it's a really intense derby. There were a few times when I went to England and they were all at each other, I thought, fuck this. Derby were fighting with so and so, Leeds were fighting with this. They were, it was just it was pathetic, like you're all English, and because there's nobody else to fight with, they're all sniffed up, they end up fighting with each other, which to me, I'm English, I don't want to fight with a fella. It's, it's, it's not a game worth getting into. I don't, you can't really call it fear because adrenaline takes over when he's a. I mean, my biggest buzz is when we were outnumbered, and a lot of people think you're you warped and what have you. But I used to love it when it were on top and said he was 10 or 30 or 30 then. And it were bigger buzz because you got no to lose and you had to stand together. It's like a hull. I got slashed at all and I got captured in, uh, on the floor and, you were, and I could steal the car, so I carving it up and I could hear my clothes going and I think you know, I'm going to be bits here. It was a thing with uh, sort of mid 80s, early 80s where they cut your clothes up. Football's done, it's finished, you've missed both. <laughs>